Hey, kid named Finger, if that's your real name, congratulations on passing JLPT1. You are the greatest linguist I've ever known. As a treat, I'm going to teach you Japanese chemistry, specifically the elements on the periodic table and their Japanese names, because I'm pretty sure nobody's done that video idea before. Before we get started, like and subscribe, and that's basically it. So on the periodic table, which in Japanese is Genso no Shukihyo, or just Shukihyo, the majority of the elements don't have Japanese names, and it's just phoneticized into katakana. Only basic elements that's been known for hundreds of years have original terms. So I'm just going to cover the elements that have Japanese names. Let's get started. So out of the 118 elements on the periodic table, only 26 of them have names not strictly borrowed from the Western periodic table. The other 92 are just simply Western names roughly phoneticized into Japanese. Helium is Hedium. Lithium is Lichium. Lorentium is Rorentium. Simple, right? Just follow the pattern. The other 26 though, you just kind of have to remember it through sheer force. Hydrogen in Japanese is suiso. Let's just take a second to study this word, right? Well, the kanji to the left means water. You would have to be a tier 3 idiot to not connect the dots. And the kanji on the right in this context means element or ium. So hydrogen in Japanese would be roughly waterium. Fun fact, this same kanji can be found in this word as well. Boron in Japanese is hoso. And the name derives from the worst telephone game in all of history. The name first derives from the Arabic word Barak, aka Borax. And then the Persians heard about it, wrote it like this, Bruh. And then the Chinese heard it around the 10th century and wrote it like this, Peng Sha. And then finally the Japanese stole it and turned it into Ho Sha, somehow. And then somewhere along the way, scientists found Boron and Borax. And now we got this. Otherwise, this is technically Boraxium. Carbon in Japanese is tanso, aka charcoalium. The term was coined by this guy, Udagawa Yoan. He's the guy who studied Dutch science books and published them in Japanese. He also named hundreds of other stuff, including hydrogen from earlier. Nitrogen in Japanese is chiso, asphyxium. This one originated from the German name of nitrogen, stickstoff, a compound word of sticken and stoff. German, German isn't a real language, I swear. Oxygen in Japanese is sanso. The kanji on the left means acid, so why is it used to describe, you know, air? According to Wikipedia, when oxygen was first discovered, it was believed that it produces acids, hence the name. Hundreds of years later, Dutch studies, bam, sanso. Fluorine in Japanese is fuso. Now, there's no deep reason why this kanji is used to describe fluorine. It's just that this kanji makes the sound fu, so it was attached to so to describe fluorine. Kind of half-assed if you ask me. Silicone in Japanese is keiso. So in Dutch, silicon used to be called keiarde, allegedly. And when Uragawa Yoan studied the Dutch text, he chose this kanji because it's read as ke, allegedly. Phosphorus in Japanese is ring. How did we get here? Well, it turns out when phosphorus is burning, it looks like Willow the Wisp. Yeah, like that one Pokemon move. They just use that word as the name for phosphorus. Isn't etymology dope? Sulfur in Japanese is io. There's not much of a deep history behind it. It's more like a description of sulfur itself. Now to you history nerds out there, this word is the word found in Iwo Jima, an important island in World War II. Interestingly, it's not called Iwo Jima in Japanese. It's ioto. Chlorine in Japanese is enso. Yep, that's chloride. Last name is saltium. Titanium in Japanese is chitang. The name derives from Titan, the Greek god. Just like titanium, except there's no ium. I almost didn't include this one, but I just found it interesting how it's not called Titan. Manganese in Japanese is mangan. Now the name comes from a Greek region called magnesia. And then we just kind of colonized the word with kanji that makes it sound mang and gang. Iron in Japanese is tetsu. Now, iron existed in Japan for millions of years, so obviously a word was formed over the years. Now, a fun fact about this kanji is that steel companies usually avoid using this version of the kanji in favor of this kanji, because the one on the left can be interpreted as money gone. Copper in Japanese is do. It's the same story as iron, we just took it from the Chinese. Zinc in Japanese is ayan, another slightly confusing name. So the kanji on the right means lead, and the kanji on the left in this context means oxidize. You're starting to understand the thought process, right? When you add oxygen to zinc, it looks pretty much similar to lead, hence this. 
arsenic in Japanese is hiso. Now, this kanji has been used by the Chinese for a long time, and we just kind of borrowed it. Bromine, or the BR in Breaking Bad, is shuso. Now, the name originated from the French, who realized that bromine smells like death, even to their own standards. And then the Japanese just named it after that idea. Smellium. Silver in Japanese is ging, existed for millions of years, simple as that. Tin in Japanese is suzu, same story, just make sure to not mix it up with this or this. This is tin, this is bell, and this is sparrow. Iodine in Japanese is yoso. So the name originated in Greek where they named iodine after its violet color. When the Germans took this word to the Japanese, they also called it yod, but then it gradually turned into yodo, and now yoso. Platinum in Japanese is hakin. The name originated from the Dutch, who named platinum weak gold, literally white gold. Then Uragawa Yoan just named it hakin after the Dutch. Gold in Japanese is king. Now, king can either be read as money or gold, which hundreds of years ago and still today means the same thing. This kanji is also a jigsaw, so we will see it on kanji related to metal. Mercury in Japanese is suigin. I'll give you three seconds. Take a wild guess why it's called that. Tick, 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 tick. Because it looks like silver if it was in the form of water. Lead in Japanese is namari. So the name namari comes from this other word, which means soft. And as you may or may not know, lead is very malleable. I could bend it just by looking at it. And the name just kind of stuck around because it was known to the Japanese way before the Dutch. Uranium in Japanese is urang. Now the name comes from Uranus, obviously, but for some reason it's just Urang. Of course, people also call it Uranium, but it's more or less just known as Urang. And finally, element 113 is universally known as Nihonium because it was discovered by the Japanese in 2016. Fuck yeah. For those out of the blue, in Japanese, Japan is Nihon, Nihongo, Nihon Daihyo, etc. But to outsiders, it's known as Japan, and there's a funny story why. So remember how I said Borax was the worst telephone game in all of history? Well, it turns out there's a contender to the title. According to a bunch of different sources, Japan went to China saying, Hey, we are Nihong, Sunrise Foundation. And the Chinese were like, Sipan, right? When Marco Polo asked about those particular islands across the ocean, the Chinese were like, Oh yeah, that's Sipangu, shit. And then he went back to Venice, wrote it down as Zipangu. For some fucking reason, it turned to Japon. Here's where it gets really confusing. Before that, the Malaysians picked up the word from the Chinese and called Sipan Jepung. And then through combining the two, it evolved into Japan. Or at least that's most likely the origin. If you have other ideas, please write them in the comments. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, like. God, I seriously hope this video does good. I'm trying to find a good balance of never been done before and click worthy to get my channel on its feet again. If this video doesn't do the job, I guarantee the next one will. I got a good feeling, trust me. Until next time, we'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through. Just like you always do Till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away